Hello, this is uh, going to be a tutorial on how to use the Marwin Actuator Sizing Program, which is located on the Marwin Valve website. Um, if we click the Support tab, it will bring us up a handful of options. On the left side is the Actuator Sizing Program, which will bring us to an Excel-based attachment. So this is this actuator sizing program is meant to size our UT series actuators and our ER actuators, Marwin branded for our Marwin ball valves. Um, once we this Excel sheet's open, uh, get into that. First, we want to enable editing, and we also want to enable the content, so the macros behind the scenes here. So on the left side, we'll start on the left, is our first drop down. This is going to be all the valves that are manufactured by Marlin and some obsolete valves as well if we're trying to do a one that's been out in the field for a number of years. So these are all the models available to be sized uh, using our actuators. Um, the second is the sizes, and it'll be the size sizes available for the selected model. Uh, next is our seat material, a number of seat materials. Um, as we change the seat materials, it changes the torque in the valve. The harder the seat, the higher the torque. Um, so the number of the seat options that are available for the series selected. We have our service factor, or a safety factor, people sometimes call it. Typically, it defaults. We always use 1 point or 20 percent or 1.2. Um, if we know the service or the application, if it's clean and throttling or dirty, we may up the service factor to make sure we have enough safety factor. But normally, 90 percent of the time, we're using 1.2. Um, and then below is where we have our results. So after we enter all our information. We'll, it'll determine what electric size actuator, what size spring return, and what size double acting that we need. So let's just run through an example. Let's go to our drop down and hit the 8700 just for an example. So the 8700 says it's only available in half through two inch, which is what you'll find in our data sheet as well. So if let's pick the inch and a half, for example, it'll always default to the standard seat material that comes with the valve. So in this case, it's the RPTFE, which is reinforced Teflon. And it'll give the other options available. So reinforced Teflon, and then it, the default is always 1.2 when we bring it up. So behind the scenes, it recognizes that to turn an inch and a half 8700 with standard RPTFE seats, it takes 250 inch pounds of torque. So 250 times our 1.2 gives us our, re our required torque of 300 inch pounds. So after we have the inputs done, we always want to hit calculate. That'll refresh all the data uh, below. So the electric actuator. It says, all right, you need 300. The ER3 actually produces exactly 300. So it's equal, greater than or equal to. So it says it's okay. Use the ER3 for that, that size valve, for that valve. Spring return, we'll say use a UT-2.5. SR, which is spring return, 05, is just the spring set. No real concern there. Um, then the double acting says use a UT1DA. Uh, something to think about here, it gives us actuator supply pressure. So typically your the uh, applications are going to be 60 to 80 PSI, but if we know what the air supply is to the actuator, we need to adjust that. So the more air pressure, we may be able to get away with a smaller spring return actuator, therefore reducing cost. If we go to 50 PSI, for example, is there maximum uh, pressure for the actuator, and re-hit calculate, 
it may take us up to the next the next size or the size or two. So we went from a 2.5 to a 3.5, which I don't have the numbers in front, but it may be a couple a couple hundred dollars difference in cost. So something to think about when putting the actuator supply pressure in there to make sure it has enough torque to open and close the valve. And the same goes for the DA actuators from 80 to 60 PSI or anything other than that. Um, once you change that, it may change the UTDA sizing. So some valves, if we go back to the top, some valves will give you the option to put the differential pressure in. Normally the lower the lower pressure valves, let's say a thousand psi or below, will just use one one valve torque. If we get in some higher pressure valves, it'll let you put the differential pressure in. So, for example, the 4700 goes up to 2,000 psi in the smaller sizes. So, this differential pressure across the valve pops up. Um, it says that it says at zero psi, it uses it's 250 inch pounds. But if we put 2,000 psi, it's, it takes a lot more torque to turn against that pressure, upping it to 550 or 660 using a safety factor. So it takes you, for example, in the ER, it takes you from ER three to an ER six. So it's crucial to know that differential pressure if if we know what we need to turn off against. So just uh, something to think about when sizing, sizing actuators. If you are going back and forth from the sizing program to the price book, the price book actuator sizes are all sized to maximum differential, which means for the 4700 in the inch and a half that we're looking at here, it's going to be sized with an ER6. If we only need you know, uh, if we need a lower pressure, we may be able to get away with an ER3, therefore saving us a lot of money. So something something also to think about how our price book is set up. So it's set up for worst case scenario. Um, again, there's a number of a number of options from three ways to our standard. There's also at the very bottom an own. So this would be if you want us to automate a butterfly valve or um, somebody else's valve, a uh, competitor's valve. You can hit select own, um, soft seat or hard seat, wh whatever the valve is determined, and if we know the valve torque. So typically if it's a butterfly valve um, from a different manufacturer, they're going to say, you know, our required torque for this size is 250 inch-pounds. We can put that in here and hit calculate and go right back down to whatever type of actuator we need and then we can add you know the UT 3.5 um, cost and we can obviously do the automation here in Cincinnati so something something more to think about um, that is pretty much it as far as the actuator sizing program goes for any other questions just contact your um, inside sales correspondent or regional sales manager thank you